What's up? My name is Technova here for Troubleshoot and welcome back to another video. In this quick video, we'll be running through a full optimization so that you can get the best FPS possible while playing Halo Infinite multiplayer, which is currently out in beta. If you don't know how to get it, check the description down below. On top of that, if you'd like further optimizations for Windows 10 or 11 and your NVIDIA graphics card, check the description down below for extended guides that'll help you get even more out of your computer. This one's only going to lightly touch on Windows optimizations specific to this game, and then we'll be hopping into it for an in-game options customization. So without further ado, let's go ahead and begin. With a brand new AAA game comes brand new drivers. Make sure you head across to the NVIDIA or AMD website, which you can find links to down below, then download and install the latest graphics drivers, making sure you have everything required to actually play this game well. On top of that, if you haven't already, do update Windows to the latest version possible. As for Windows 10 versus 11, I'm fine playing on Windows 10, you'll be fine playing on either as well. Now, let's go ahead and begin the actual optimization. If you own the game on Steam, simply locate the game on the list, then right-click it, hover over Manage, and click Browse Local Files. If you own it on any other platform, simply navigate across to here. If you have it in the Xbox app, unfortunately, steps are different to get here. You'll find steps in the description down below, but this isn't too important. Right-click HaloInfinite.exe, click Properties, and inside of this window here, on the Compatibility tab, Tick Disable Full Screen Optimizations. Click Change High DPI Settings. Tick this box at the very bottom. Select the application, OK, Apply, and OK. Then click at the very top up here to copy the address. Right click Copy, and then hit Start, and type in GPU. We'll be opening Graphics Settings. Inside of here, make sure you have Hardware Accelerated GPU Scheduling turned on. Then under Graphics Performance Preference, select Desktop App, and click Browse. Inside of this new window, paste in the address we just copied, hit enter, and then double click on halo-infinite.exe. When it pops up on the list as Halo Infinite, click Options, then click High Performance and Save. This will make sure that the game runs on the best graphics card in our computer, which is especially important on a notebook, laptop, or something with multiple GPUs. If you have it on the Xbox Game Pass, select Microsoft Store app here, and then select the game from the list. When you do, it'll pop up, and steps are exactly the same. When you're done with that, hit the back button in the top left, then click Home. Then we'll be heading into the Gaming section. Under Xbox Game Bar, make sure that this is turned off unless you explicitly use some of the features here. Then on the Capture section, if you see anything about Game Capture, turn it off here. Otherwise, if not, and you have the Xbox Game Bar app installed, we'll get there in just a moment. Head across to the Gaming Mode section and turn this on. Then we can go ahead and close out of this. As mentioned earlier, if you have the Xbox Game Bar installed, simply open it up with Start and G, or click the application here. When it opens up, click the Settings wheel at the very top, and inside of this window here, under the Capturing tab, just make sure that Record in the background while I'm playing a game is unchecked. This way it won't be recording 24-7. This will especially cause a performance hit if you're already recording using NVIDIA Shadow Play and or OBS. Next up, let's go ahead and make sure our hard drive slash SSD is nice and clean. Hit start and type in clean, where we'll be opening a disk cleanup as administrator. Then select C drive, the one with Windows, click OK, wait for it to scan, and when this new window pops up, it'll have a whole bunch of temporary files that we can tick and clear them off of our computer. I usually keep Recycle Bin unchecked as I go through this later by myself, and the thumbnails down here, I have a ton of images, so I'd prefer the thumbnails not to regenerate every time I open the folder. So with all of these ticked except for these two, I'll go ahead and click OK to clean out a huge number of temporary files on our computer and clean up a ton of space. Then wait for it to complete, and when it does, we'll be launching it once again as administrator, though this time choosing a different drive if you've installed the game somewhere else. If you have only one drive, don't worry about opening it a second time. Now something I usually forget to mention is make sure you have a good power plan selected on your computer so that nothing is being throttled and or held back. This is especially important on a laptop. Hit start and type in plan where we'll be clicking edit power plan or choose a power plan. I prefer choose a power plan. This way we can then choose AMD Ryzen high performance if you have a Ryzen and the chipset drivers installed or simply high performance. If you're on a laptop and you don't see high performance, you'll be selecting balanced. Anything but power saver is usually good. If you'd like to get the ultimate performance power plan, check the description down below for a simple code that you can copy and paste into an administrator command prompt Hit enter and you'll get the ultimate performance power plan. Now, of course, on top of this, your PC has a limited number of resources. You can only squeeze so much out of it. 
So, because of this, it's a good idea to try and close as many background programs as possible. Hold Control Shift and press Escape to bring up the Windows Task Manager. Inside of here, you can sort by CPU, memory, and GPU to find out what's using what resources. Simply close as many things as possible, only keep the ones that you need open while gaming open. Then head across to the Startup tab at the very top, sort by status, and everything listed as enabled here starts up when your computer starts up. Simply right-click an item you don't want booting with your computer and click Disable. This way, fewer programs will start when you log into your computer, which means fewer programs in the background to close later, and of course, it'll improve your startup time. Very nice. Then, if you're a power user, you may want to head across to Services at the very top, click Open Services at the bottom, and inside of here, sort by startup type. Anything listed is automatic, starts up when your computer starts up, and you can simply double-click any process here, then change it from automatic to manual or disabled to choose whether you launch the program yourself or the service doesn't run at all on your computer. This way, you can further speed up boot times and, of course, have fewer things running in the background. But this is only really for power users. Closing out of Task Manager, it's also a good idea to make sure that you have only a few, if any, overlays running in your game. This includes the Discord overlay, Steam overlay, etc, etc. Everything drawing on top of the game will take away some of your FPS. On top of this, if you're really struggling for graphics card power, do make sure to disable hardware acceleration in things like Discord and Steam, as those programs will then use more CPU instead of your GPU, allowing your game to be less GPU bottlenecked, giving you a few more FPS. On top of this, if you're using a laptop, do try playing the game with an external display, because on some laptops, you do get better performance when a display is plugged directly into the dedicated graphics card on your device. Finally, let's actually go ahead and launch up Halo Infinite Multiplayer, and let's get into customizing it. Once again, further Windows 10, 11, and NVIDIA optimizations can be found in the description down below. Then, when the game itself is fired up, head into the Options menu in the bottom left, or hit F1. In here, head across to Settings, then Video at the very top, and we'll be changing a couple of things in here. Field of view is user preference, but of course will affect your FPS. Display adapter should be set to your high performance graphics card. This is especially important on a laptop with an integrated and dedicated graphics card. Display monitor is whatever monitor it shows on. Unlike other games, this game doesn't have a full, full screen mode. The best you can get is borderless full screen or windowed, so there's nothing you can really do here. Usually you'll want full screen to get the best input latency and FPS. Resolution scale should be set to 100% as anything lower will improve your FPS, but it'll make it a hell of a lot blurrier. Minimum frame rate should be changed from 60 all the way to off as having this on. As soon as your FPS drops below this, it'll try and adjust everything dynamically to give you higher FPS. You may have different experiences with this. I, however, like to turn this off as I want everything to stay as is while I'm playing it. I can manually change the settings myself instead of having them change dynamically. Maximum frame rate is the frame rate cap and should match your screen's refresh rate. Of course, the highest that you can get here will depend on what kind of monitor you have. I can select 165 as my screen supports that. V-Sync should be turned off unless you're explicitly experiencing screen tearing with the top half renders before the bottom half, etc, etc. Otherwise, having it on will give you higher input latency. Then we have Limit Interactive Frame Rate. You should have this on, as the maximum frame rate will be changed when you tab out of the game, giving you better performance elsewhere. Of course, this is up to you. Then we have the Graphics Options. This is where we'll gain the majority of our FPS. The quality preset up here changes absolutely everything below it, and you will need to restart your game after changing things here for changes to take place. I'd recommend either low or medium for older graphics cards. A 1080 Ti seems to run high pretty well, and of course anything newer than that, I'd recommend Ultra if you'd like the best quality in the game. Of course, nothing is different here. The lower you have all of these settings, the better your FPS will be. One of the ones here that cost you quite a bit of performance for minimal quality gain is anti-aliasing. You can comfortably push this down to low to have the game look pretty much exactly the same while gaining a couple of FPS. Texture filtering is anisotropic filtering, and you can push this usually as high as you want without any performance impact on the actual game itself for newer graphics cards. Ambient occlusion has to do with screen space shadows, and of course has some performance hit, though usually not a huge amount. 
you can leave this on medium or low. The texture quality over here and geometry quality completely depend on how much VRAM your graphics card has. As you see, changing these settings over here changes the VRAM usage down here as well. Now, do note that this won't really cost you a huge amount of FPS having this higher, but you will gain quite a bit of quality in game from turning these up. However, if you're struggling with VRAM, do turn these down to keep good headroom above the maximum of VRAM you have available on your computer. Now, of course, if you lower these down to medium or low, it's also a good idea to lower texture filtering as you don't really need that much going on here as the textures aren't that good to filter anyways. So this, of course, completely depends on what kind of graphics card you have. I'll be leaving both of these on medium. Then scrolling down even further, we have reflections. Now this isn't ray traced reflections, this is just normal reflections, but of course having this on at all will cause some performance loss and the higher you push it, the more frames you will lose. I usually leave these on low, as for Twitch shooters, it's not really something you're gonna be staring at all the time. Depth of field, however, is something you'll be looking at all the time in a Twitch shooter. I'd absolutely recommend turning this to low as you'll be able to see better. Then we have shadow quality, lighting quality, volumetric fog quality, and cloud quality over here. All of these are sort of user preference and they're not things that you're going to be focusing on while you're actually playing the game, especially if you're highly competitive. If you're a highly competitive player and you'd want the absolute best FPS, you can drop these all down to low or even off without noticing anything too much. Volumetric fog quality, turning it to off, I do believe removes some fog, meaning that you'll be able to see a bit better while you're actually playing the game itself, which of course could be a competitive advantage. Scrolling down further, we have dynamic wind, which is mainly a CPU band effect that messes around with objects in the scene. I'd recommend turning this down to get better FPS. Ground cover quality has to do with foliage, and of course this isn't something you're gonna be staring at. You can comfortably push this down to low. Effect quality has to do with explosions and things like that. If you're randomly losing FPS, do turn this down, to get a bit more stability out of your game. Decal quality has to do with bullet holes, explosions, tire tracks, footprints, etc, etc, and is usually CPU bound, so do turn this down if you're experiencing CPU bound issues. I'll leave this on medium. Animation quality is also CPU bound, and you can usually leave this on auto without too much fuzz. Terrain quality, when set to higher options here, will help you see further and reduce pop-in. So, of course, if you're experiencing quite a few FPS drops, do turn this down to low, especially if you get FPS drops when looking in a specific direction. I'll be leaving this on medium. Simulation quality is CPU bound once again and has to do with all of these simulations running in the world. You can usually put this down to low if you're experiencing CPU bound issues, otherwise you can leave this on medium without too much actual change while playing. Flocking quality has to do with flocks of birds, herds, animals, etc, etc. You can usually leave this on low as you're not going to be focusing on these while you're playing the game. You can of course turn this off if you'd like, but I would like some things going on in the world around me. Finally, async compute sets whether to execute compute work in parallel with graphics work on GPUs that support it. I would recommend turning this on as it should give you higher FPS, though this should be the last thing that you change while you're actually playing the game to see if it actually changes anything for you as this will be highly hardware dependent. Finally, we have some sensory things down here, such as radial blur, screen shake, exposure, full screen effects, speed lines, and sharpening, which I would recommend turning all of these off or at least all the way down if you'd like to see more while you're actually playing the game. I'll put these somewhere around 40 as I'd still like exposure changes, screen shake, etc, etc, but I don't want them taking away from the actual gameplay experience itself, as I am quite a competitive player. Speed lines has to do with white lines that appear during sprinting, traveling, etc, and this may be something you want to turn off, and I'll be leaving this on. Finally, we have sharpening, which should help you see objects in the distance a bit easier, so I'd usually leave this on 60, though this is completely user preference and shouldn't affect your performance at all. Now we're done with the video settings optimization, other than the field of view up here, which you'll be playing with in game. As this is more of a user preference thing, I'm not going to give you a specific number here for the best FPS. Do note that this will affect your FPS, however, depending on what you have it set to, 
though of course gameplay experience comes first. On the audio tab there isn't much that we need to change here other than maybe dynamic range. Set this to compressed mode if you'd like less of a change between loud explosions and quiet footsteps which means that you'll be able to hear more and actually comfortably turn up your volume a bit more without worrying about explosions making you completely deaf which could give you a competitive edge especially in 1v1 situations. Besides that there's not too much we want to change here. Same goes for UI, keyboard and mouse and controller they're all completely user preference. Friends. Finally, the accessibility tab over here has a couple of things that you may want to play with, especially if you have a different language for text. You'd like the UI to appear differently, subtitles, visual changes such as enemy colors, etc, etc, text-to-speech, speech-to-text, and these sensory options over here we saw previously in the video tab. Finally, match history privacy. With that comes the end of our optimization guide, I'll back out of this, and of course you can fire up multiplayer, join an actual game, and see what your FPS is like. A good place to test your FPS and tweak your settings is the bot bootcamp, in which you can just click on it and click play to be dropped straight into a training game. This way you won't affect other people's performance online, and of course you'll be quickly dropped into games. And there we go. As you can see, my FPS counter in the top left is provided by Steam. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to get the River Tuna full FPS to work, showing a whole bunch of information and details on my computer, but having the Steam FPS counter is pretty much good enough. Having this game play at 2K at 70 FPS on a 1080 with my current settings is pretty good. There's very little to no input latency and things are working well, though of course I do have everything set on medium plus minus, so there is still a ton of improvement that can be done. On top of this, if you're used to playing the game on a console, having the highest possible FPS maybe isn't something that you're looking for. You can of course tweak the settings to be your liking, and this video is only a rough guide that you should try and follow. Nothing is set in stone, and after all, it all comes down to your user preference. Of course, sensitivity is something I'll definitely be changing. But anyways, that's about it for this quick guide. If you'd like to see any more optimization tips, do check the description down below. And on top of that, you'll also find fixes and different guides for Halo Infinite multiplayer in the description down below if you'd like to use any. Thank you all for watching. My name's been Technoba here for Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.